scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There are six reasons I've written here. We'll take that for tonight and pray. If you do not understand, um, do you know, do you know, please look up, do you know the average believer prays largely to ease the guilt of looking like an unserious Christian. They are not really interested in the results. Subconsciously, there seems to, if you are a believer and you are living among other believers, you know, prayer has a way of intimidating you. Someone is praying seriously and that prayer is judging your unseriousness. You keep looking at yourself and in response to that sense of judgment, you find a way of conforming to that religious activity as an act of appeasal. You're not interested in the results. The reason is because most of our prayer is not motivated by understanding. We have not been taught what prayer does. And so we just do it because Jesus did it. We just do it because it makes us feel spiritual. But let me show you six biblical reasons why believers must pray ready number one the first reason and those of you who are following from your homes from every nation please do well to write it down so that you can teach others too we need to mature the body by helping them understand what prayer does the first reason why we pray is that God commanded that we pray it is a command Two scriptures, Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Popular scripture, I use it a lot when teaching, especially around the subject of prayer. This was a parable. Now in his earthwork, Jesus used a lot of parables. Why? Because his listeners were not spiritual people. They were not regenerated. Their organs of interacting with the realm of the spirit had not been developed through the ministry of the word and prayer. So he had to employ parables. To help them explain how the kingdom works and he spake a parable to this end the morale of the parable is that men everybody say men men, men here doesn't just mean the male gender men humans that humans ought always to pray and not to faint so it's a command the whole idea of the story is to bring us to a point where we understand the power and the excellency of prayer the Bible says there was a city, verse 2. Luke 18 and verse 2. There was a city, in a city, a judge. May you never meet this kind of judge in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. My apologies to those who are, those of us who are judges and magistrates. I'm your friend. There was in a city, a judge. Look at the description of this kind of man. The Bible says, which feared not God. That means it's difficult for God to speak to him. Number two, he neither regarded man. You couldn't bribe him, you couldn't come and beg. What sort of a man is this? So this is scene one. And then scene two, the Bible says there was a widow. A widow is a, supposedly a defenseless woman. Her source of security and defense has been taken away from her. He's teaching you the power of prayer. And then the Bible says she came to him, that man. Avenge me of my adversary. Verse 4. The Bible says he would not for a while. 
but afterwards he said within himself my god that means there's something prayer does even to the most hardened situation if you pray with time there is an energy that prayer exerts that begins to change even the most impossible situations he says though i fear not god so the man is aware he's aware of his condition it's not just that the writer is telling lies the man is aware he's testifying here now that even though i do not fear god nor regard man verse 5 it says yet because this widow troubled me so there is something that prayer does to situations and circumstances i will avenge her less by her importunity or the bible says her continual coming she weary or weaken me this is an illustration to show you what prayer does in the realm of the spirit that no matter how weak and defenseless you are if you can engage prayer consistently that it can do something in the face of situations and circumstances prayer is a command once you are a man if you are an angel and you are a spirit you don't need to pray but provided you are wearing this material body the bible mandates that we pray first thessalonians 5 and verse 17 second scripture for that point let's hurry up first thessalonians 5 and verse 17 apostle paul is speaking to the church in thessalonica and he says pray without season the word pray without season does not mean pray from morning till night every day you do that you become an irresponsible man you will not be able to fulfill other things the idea here is be consistent the power of prayer is not just in the activity but the consistency pray without season number two why should we pray according to first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2 the bible recommends prayer as one of the strategies for fellowship with god and fellowship with heaven the bible says in this case speaking about praying in an unknown tongue it says for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto god now there's no time to contrast this with what the bible calls diverse kinds of tongues there are two different experiences when we come to the series on the holy spirit then we touch the gifts of the spirit then i will teach you this the bible um creates a dichotomy between what it calls the, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and the prayer language that was given to all believers this has been an age-long controversy in the body of christ as to whether it is all men that pray in tongues like all the other nine gifts um the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is not given to everyone but the prayer language it says for this promise is unto you and to your children and to your children's children as many as are far off even as many as the lord will call when you read all through the books of acts every time the holy ghost came it came on all of them no reservation they were all filled with the holy spirit they began to speak whether it's acts chapter 2 whether it's acts chapter 6 to 8 whether it's acts chapter 19 the most classic sign or the most classic defense of the baptism of the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is found in acts chapter 19 maybe we just look at that very quickly just to clear the air on that verse 1 the bible says paul having passed through the upper coast the bible says that um he came to ephesus and then he found certain disciples follow the discourse verse 2 he said unto them have you received the holy ghost since you believed and they said unto him we have not so much heard whether there be any holy ghost they were disciples so you see there was something about their teacher their teacher was not teaching them something they said in our lecture we've not received this we don't even know that there's anything called the holy spirit surprise now he said unto what then were you baptized and they said unto john's baptism now the lecture begins verse 4 he said john's baptism verily verily john baptized with the baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him who should come after him that is on christ verse 5 when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus the miracle now and when paul had laid his hands on them 
the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied the Bible tells us their number verse 7 the Bible says and all the men were about 12 and they all received so I just thought to bring this in we have a separate series where we deal with that praise the name of the Lord but just for you to know that when we talk about the prayer language of tongues we're not talking about the gift of the diverse kinds of tongues are we together fellowship with God when you begin to pray in the spirit it brings fellowship in fact the Bible says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God he says the fellowship that's where we get the word koinonia the sharing together the participation of the spirit he says let it abide with you let it remain with you let it be with you when you fellowship with God, with God you fellowship with the spirit there is a divine deposit that comes from God into you a transmission of power wisdom grace every spiritual virtue that makes for your excelling fellowship is very important are we together it is one of the tools for fellowship number three why does the Bible mandate that we pray prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and for transformation prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and transformation first Corinthians 14 and verse 4 just two verses after what we just where we just read first Corinthians 14 and verse 4 the Bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edify it edify it the word edify is an architectural term you build yourself you build capacity in the spirit remember the Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle it is that your strength capacity is small so you build capacity in the spirit when you pray he that prays edifies himself Luke chapter 9 Luke chapter 9 probably one of the most classic representations of the transforming power of prayer Luke chapter 9 verse 28 and 29 Luke chapter 9 the Bible says and it came to pass about and eight days after these sayings he took Peter John and James and went up to the mountain to pray verse 29 the Bible says and as he prayed watch transformation two things happen one the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering there is a dimension of beauty and glory you evolve it's like it's like a transformation into superior dimensions of yourself when you pray I am telling you this works you can pray your way to higher dimensions of yourself growth and transformation bring for me a weak believer timid completely ignorant but with the heart that is bent on prayer I show you a sign and a wonder just a few months and a few years later let one day become one week become one month become one year become three years become five years and I show you a sign and a wonder was it not Paul himself that says I thank my God I pray in tongues more than ye all are we together I hope God is blessing us say amen, amen. it's very important that we pray growth and transformation is impossible for a believer if you do not pray now you see for many believers prayer is simply a tool for petitions and for receiving not transformation the primary assignment of prayer I'll be teaching as as we proceed in the series the primary assignment of prayer believe me is not for breakthroughs for miracles etc no most of the breakthroughs that we need we even need them in the first place because of ignorance of the principles of the kingdom remember the Bible says when you are praying pray that your kingdom come 
because when his kingdom comes there are many things you would not need to ask for again because of the presence of the kingdom most of the miracles that we seek today are acts of God's mercy correcting our ignorance so if you understand the kingdom and the ways of God your prayers will largely be that of fellowship and growth not just petitions because the accuracy of your understanding will bring triumph after triumph result after result in your life is that true God's desire is not for us to live in the realm of what we know to be miracles signs and wonders they are supposed to be um, a thing of wonder to unbelievers largely but to we who are in the kingdom miracles help to escort us to the place where we get to maturity and accuracy in the spirit now we begin to live by the mysteries of the kingdom growth and transformation show me a believer who engages in prayer for many of us our prayer is not systemic it's not methodical it's haphazard if you are fortunate to wake up early in the morning good for God and good for you that day you can at least steal out 30 minutes quickly and feel spiritual and then backslide in a very very bad way until after one month or when situations wake you up then you quickly catch up you ask for forgiveness you repent and then you start again do you know that even in the secular mastery is gained through consistency ask anybody who leads his field in the secular you do not become a professional in anything by just freelancing and shadow boxing and getting your way you have to invest your time your energy your resources in ever increasing dimensions to attain mastery consistency growth and transformation you must get to a point where you see the relevance of prayer you discipline yourself you get up in the morning this is the day the Lord has made you are praying Sheila Kapo Siata. you understand edification you begin to deposit prayer I'll be teaching us as the series proceed that prayer is one of the mysteries that is not bound by time that means you can send it to your tomorrow to wait for you prayer is powerful yes sir your prayer can be like an usher like a protocol you send it into your tomorrow to verify that the road is clear before you arrive if for any reason it goes there and find demons attempting to go ahead you know what the woman's prayer did to that church that's exactly what will be happening while you come triumphantly it's dangerous to step into a realm that prayer did not usher you into it's risky because the whole world lies in wickedness are we together let's hurry up we have to pray Jude 1 Jude has only one chapter verse 20 the Bible again talks about prayer it says but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost so prayer builds up there are many ways that prayer builds up it builds up by activating your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit so when you begin to pray what happens to you is that your discernment and sensitivity is activated you can know then you come into dimensions where people like Papa Hagen now begin to talk about the knowing of the spirit where you can know things even though your eyes may not see angels but you can know they are here and at first when you start in the school of prayer it will look like you are lying but the accuracy and the predictability of your result will convince you eventually that that faculty of perception is not a lie you will know you will perceive danger prayer is powerful it brings you to a point where you are able to interact that duality of realms you are human yet you are spiritual you can be in a place and yet perceive spiritual realities number four the fourth reason why we pray in this kingdom is as an instrument for warfare and intercession yes sir warfare and intercession ladies and gentlemen demons are real spirits are real wickedness is real 
the devil is as determined as ever to see that he thwarts the purposes of God over our lives and all that concerns us meaning if you fold your hands and let him be he will shred your life and destroy your family and everything that pertains unto you but there is a provision in our dealing with God where believers can take advantage of the forces of the spirit that were all brought as a result of the finished work of Christ and through this mystery we call warfare and intercession we can engage and establish these realities in our lives here and now warfare and intercession is very powerful James chapter 5 and verse 13 Apostle James now is teaching us James 5 and verse 13 the Bible says is any among you afflicted buffeted is any among you in a situation that is unpleasant is many among you seeing the handwriting of Satan over your children your life your career your business don't explain it away using science or sociology it says the moment you find affliction the solution is let him pray we do every other thing but prayer we discuss with people who do not have the maturity nor the might to help us out of that situation and yet we do not pray is any among you afflicted he says let him pray for time's sake we may not read on but when you read down to 18 it uses Elijah it personifies an individual called Elijah that he was a man of like passions but he took the tool of prayer and literally stopped rain physically not a parable over a territory let me tell you this Elijah was not the only one who believed in the God of the Bible and I'm sure there were people who said God don't mind him we command rain to come and yet rain did not come because a man had authority to prayer and God respected his authority regardless what you were saying that day you will keep talking if Elijah did not speak rain would not come may God give us that kind of authority that you can stand and speak over your family and say this year you all rise and go to bed it doesn't matter who is talking after you he spoke too late you have declared let all the enchantments and all the divination speak not the one that you pray and then you go and lie down and say what are they saying now no Elijah's authority when he declared it he said I know God he went to bed there were other prophets under the custody of Obadiah I'm sure someone would have been annoyed and say what an arrogant man God bring rain to show this man he's not the only one and God said no he doesn't work like that when you ascend in this spirit and you have authority you will do wonders with it he prayed for a space of three and a half years there was no rain and then to show you it was not luck he went again and did the same thing and rain came hallelujah warfare and intercession it was on the strength of prayer in Acts chapter 12 when you read from verse 1 to 17 the Bible says Peter was bound hand and feet in chains they were preparing to kill him but the Bible says verse 5 that Peter was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing. that's Paul's encouragement now of the church unto God for him Believe me when I tell you prayer is powerful. They began to engage the realm of the spirit. Suddenly the Bible tells us that an angel came. The angel was always available. Peter would have died without that angel coming. And yet the angel was available. Somewhere in this series we'll talk about the ministry of angels. Because most believers do not know anything about the ministry of angels. The Bible says their assignment is to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit to see that the Word of God is never called a lie in your life. That's the assignment of angels. They are enforcers. That means when there is nothing happening from your end, they keep loitering around. Did you know that one of the ways that Satan knows God is doing something with you is through the activity of angels in the realm of the Spirit. A prayerless believer does not have angelic activities. What are they doing? 
when Satan begins to sense unusual angelic activities, he was once there so he knows, uh -uh, these angels don't come for nothing. They are coming in response. When Jacob slept in chapter 28 of Genesis, when he slept, the Bible lets us know that he saw a ladder connecting to the heavens and angels were ascending and descending. The Bible never said they were coming to him. He only saw them walking. They were going to those who were calling their ministry. That was why he said the Lord was here. These angels were passing me and they didn't do anything to me. There's no record of any angel bringing anything to him. Yet they were ascending and descending. Angels can be in your compound. They can be in your vicinity. They can be in your office. Ascending and descending. Bringing testimonies for those who are praying. Do not make the mistake of Jacob. Jacob said the Lord was in this place. I had a chance for my lifting. I had a chance for my rising. But, but according to the law of the will. It will be scripturally incorrect for the angels to come and do anything you did not ask them to do. I want to show you why many of you can have dreams and see a lot of angelic activities and yet nothing ever happens. Angels don't come because you are a Christian. They come because there is a demand. Jesus kept speaking. He sent prayer to his future. After three days, I will rise. It was not an information. After three days, I will rise. When it was the third day, God said you had the prayer. An angel came, rolled the stone and sat on it. Let me tell you, if Jesus kept quiet and never said anything, he would have been surprised what would happen after three days. The body would not decay, but you would not come out either. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Believe what I'm teaching you is why many people do not rise. They come under strong influence of angelic activities, but they are silent. Do you not know that this is how the spirit of depression works? The assignment of the spirit of depression is to use obstacles to reduce you to a point of silence. Balaam caused these people. And Balaam said, I tried, but there is the shout of the king in the midst of them. These are the mysteries that give us power and dominion in this kingdom. When you pray, there are tools of warfare. You don't fight. You only activate the laws that make warfare to be a reality. So what we call warfare is not you fighting. What we call warfare is you authorizing the host of heaven. Angel armies. My brothers and my sisters, you do not. One angel, two angels use hailstone. Is it in your Bible? When an angel stones you, will you be alive? Look at the Bible. These things were not parables. They actually happen. The angel appeared and told Joshua. Joshua removed his sword. Do you know why he removed his sword? Because God gave him a word. No man will be able to stand against you. So when the angel came, he said, who are you? And the angel had to answer. Because the word of God was in, on him. If that angel kept quiet, he would have been surprised. It was not the knife. Joshua said, God told me something. Who are you? And the angel had to say, no, 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 hold on. It is true. Believe what I'm telling you. Don't play with what God has told you. You can take it to battle. Oh, he told me that in 2021 I am victorious. Oh yes, I believe it. This is not some Pentecostal jargon. It is true. Please sit down. What then is the basis of our confidence if this is not true? Before Satan attacks you, let me tell you what happens. Satan is every other thing but a fool. Before he attacks you, he will research what you know and what you don't know. He will bring it together and build the strategy to attack you. He does not attack randomly. Satan examines 
what do you know about prayer what do you know about agreement what do you know about prophetic connection oh he doesn't know so much here what do you know about giving so he brings it what strategy can we develop what are the loopholes in his spiritual life that becomes the basis for the strategy is why satan is almost accurate when he strikes because he does not shadow box he uses your knowledge and your ignorance puts them together and build the strategy for your attack If you are Satan, will you like me? <laughs> Verse 5. Oh, number 5. Number 5. We have to finish. Luke chapter 22 from the starting. Why does the Bible mandate that we pray? Prayer is now the platform to make our requests our requests our petitions known oh no let's i made a mistake that's that's point six let's go to five it's a strategy to keep your faith alive the fifth point please correct it prayer is a strategy for living faith when you want your faith to be alive and living Luke 22 two verses quickly verse 30 and 32 prop Luke 22 from verse 30 to 32 that he may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel 31 and the Lord said now watch this Remember the first time Satan came to Jesus after the temptation in Matthew chapter 4? He came to him, it is written, it is written. Satan left for a season. The next time he would come, he did not come directly again. He came through Peter. Are we together now? And he used Peter's compassion to try to say something that would stop Jesus from going to the cross. And Jesus discerning, he said, mm -mm. Simon, Simon, behold. Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. 32. What was the remedy? But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. He says, and when you are converted, anytime you see people doubting what God has said, suddenly on Sunday you were believing. But on Tuesday, it's like you're saying, look, this thing is like wisdom is profiting to the right. He said, use this same formula. To convert them tell them an attack is happening what suddenly happened that last week you are full of faith but right now it looks like you are just saying well, one day go better the wise saying that the devil uses to deceive us when your faith fails your convictions begin to dwindle the classic character of faith is found in Romans chapter 4 when you read it uses Abraham and Sarah as a portrait that he wavered not at his faith through unbelief he counted God faithful when you pray in the spirit it truly keeps your faith alive because how many of you have gone to a place of prayer you went doubting and you kept praying and suddenly it's like a generator all of a sudden courage you know that this is doable you even ask God forgive me for the kind of unbelief I used to come to pray now my heart is alive again and then number six and we'll wrap it up for tonight why does the Bible mandate that we pray prayer is a platform to make requests and petitions are you saying that for most believers this is the only one we know requests and petitions and yet that is just number six mark 11 and verse 23 and 24 mark 11 23 24 Jesus caused the fig tree the next day it was caused and the disciples were surprised and he used the opportunity to teach them something about faith verily verily i say unto you whosoever shall say to this mountain be removed and cast into the sea shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass the bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith the law is in verse 24 therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire he says when you pray 
believe that you receive them and you shall have them it is in the place of prayer we receive and you can never have what you have not received there are two different things receiving and having is different receiving is spiritual having is the manifestation if you have not received it in the realm of the spirit you will never have it physically and that happens in the place of prayer philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 a platform to table our requests and our petitions the bible says be careful king james says careful but it's not an accurate translation the real translation there the root word there is anxiety be anxious he says for nothing right it says but in everything so there is nothing there is no aspect of your life but prayer cannot be involved in it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving here's the instruction let your request be made known don't assume god knows it it says make your request known king james says make your request known and how do you know god has answered that prayer verse 7 hallelujah and the peace of god if you have truly made your request known you can know that your request has reached heaven because suddenly the peace of god in a way that surpasses all understanding will keep the word keep there is garrison it will build a defense around your heart so that all the troubles that come and make your faith to vacillate the peace of God like a strong wall hallelujah where's Dave you sing that your song again just prepare very beautiful powerful song praise the name of the Lord as we prepare to wrap up final scripture for tonight James 4 from verse 2 and 3 James 4 the Bible says in fact let's start from verse 1 to 3 James 4 it says from whence cometh wars and fighting oh dear I wish I had time to walk this Apostle James is a very intelligent Apostle he's tracing the root of many people's problems He's saying, from whence comes wars and fighting among you? Do they not come because of disappointed expectations? There are secret desires that you have. You want to rise. You want to be successful. You want to make progress. You want your ministry to blossom. You want business to move forward. And it is human. It says that the lost that war in your members. Verse 2. It says, ye lost, that means you have even an ungodly desire and affinity, and you have not. You even go to the extent of killing, all desiring to have and you cannot obtain. You cause quarrel and fight and war, yet you have not. And the simple reason, not knowing that everyone can have a great destiny in Christ. Are you seeing what James is tracing now? James is tracing for us the root of bitterness and hatred among family members, maybe respectfully speaking, among ministers in our society, among politicians. He's saying, if you know what prayer can do, you will never envy anybody because everything you ever see, there is a way of getting it too. Another person's testimony is not why you are suffering. This is what James is trying to correct simply because you do not know how to ask look at the side effect of not being equipped with that level of knowledge and then verse 3 it says ye ask and you receive not because you ask and miss are you seeing now so he's not talking about prayerlessness he's talking about inaccuracy in understanding how to ask and receive that he may consume it upon your lusts. petitions can be made listen God did not leave us in this kingdom defenseless this our world is a wicked world and if God were to leave us to ourselves defenseless we may not be able to rise only God knows the kind of attacks per day per season 
that come upon families that come upon men of God some of you are politicians if God opens your eyes to see the number of people who try to invoke spirits day and night that you go down there are families just because God is helping you you do not know how many people is fallacy to believe that everyone is clapping for you and yet the Bible says cheer up find comfort you can still excel in this world because you are not alone heaven has a way of coming into partnership with you to make you invincible and to make your life a sign and a wonder that when all the stakes are down you are still standing in that family and they say by what means your grandfather could not stand and you tell them i learned that prayer is partnership with heaven i can draw strength i do not have i can draw wisdom i do not have let me wrap up tonight by teaching you something the highest proof of humility is prayer prayerlessness is not just sin it is pride when you do not pray it is proof that you are sufficient in yourself it, you, prayerlessness is a statement you are making to God that I have vetted you oh God and I have not found anything in you that I do not have I don't need you when we pray it is proof of humility it is an acknowledgement that we are limited in ourselves and we call for support and we call for help even the military when they go for war they have a system of asking for reinforcement when it looks like the battle is raging then they have a way of calling and the command releases more soldiers I have stood face to face with situations in my life that I knew that only prayer could come in. Many of you have stood face to face with situations, legal situations, political situations, health situations. When you stand before life's challenges and situations, sometimes you may need to drop your intellect. Sometimes you may need to drop studies and call with all humility even jesus at the height of his pain at the cross he did not keep quiet eloi eloi lamak sabatanai father if you now turn your face from me then i know that i'm truly defenseless and the father turned it away because he was looking at man the lord is nigh them that call upon him listen to me you can use the instrument of prayer to bring God down to your life and he stands by you like a mighty terrible one. You may be weak right now seated here. Listen to me. Some of you are in ministry and you are asking apostle, where will I get church land? Where will I even get the money for it? Some of you are fathers already plunging into depression because the pandemic brought so much debt you are in a situation when you go to pray you just sit down and cry i bring you words of comfort god is not evil to leave you alone it is our pride that keeps driving the help of god away from us my bible says i will lift up my eyes onto the hills then he asks a question he said from whence cometh my help i don't know about you but my help my assistance ah, I may look weak oh warm Jacob as weak as you are as defenseless as you are but let the jealousy of God be introduced to your life and you will watch your life rise in a way that will first surprise you the recipient of that kindness the hymn writer says how did he put it now he says oh what needless pain we bear he says all because we could not carry everything you know i thank god for the honor and the privilege that he's given me to work in miracle signs and wonders and sometimes when i have the opportunity to minister to people i am almost tempted to ask them why did you allow it to get this long did you not know that god is that mighty did you not know that God is able to lift? Why did you allow the issue of your house rent to go so bad? Why did you allow your health to deteriorate? Why didn't you run to God? The prodigal son kept being proud. No, I won't go to my father. I don't want shame. 
and the more he stayed there doing bold face the more he kept going down until he became like one of the peaks but one day he came to himself he said how many hired servants that's the voice of humility you know many times we want to take credit for everything in our lives Joshua Selman is a doer and God says in this kingdom owners are rebels if you can step back and say Lord you made me father over this family but the bills are killing me I step back and I allow Abba to take his place this political office I am tired of the persecutions that come here and if I leave it to myself one day they will kill me for nothing someone can give you a cup of tea that is full of poison and I know you would think you will avoid it but you, your memory can fail you one day hunger and test will make you finish drinking it first but you can still find comfort it is not only when you avoid evil that you are free there are times that the fire has no power over you the three Hebrew boys men who the fire had no power it is not only avoidance that brings victory there are times you can walk through the fire Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 fear not he says I am with you I have redeemed you I have called you by name you are mine and then he says verse 2 when thou passest through water I will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow you he says when thou walkest through fire you shall not be burnt neither shall the flame kindle upon you business people hear me I know that many of you here are veterans of business I don't mean to insult your pedigree but you have done so much just with human connection why don't you resort with humility to invite divine assistance that in addition to this some of you are professionals in your place of work why don't you employ the hand of God I am very quick to step back and say Lord if you leave me to myself how many things do I know don't leave me at the mercy of my ignorance I am learning slowly but the demands are faster than my rate of learning can you come and stand by me as a mighty terrible God bow your heads in prayer in one minute everyone were praying we just have five minutes and we're done for tonight's service please be patient don't be distracted everyone all the overflows outside following online while speaking the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and telling you you need to lay aside that burden you are carrying loads Jesus said my my yoke is easy this hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed